especially for those that are paying 75, 100 or more a year in taxes, we have specific strategies that can reduce that 40 and 50%. Um, so what would you do with an extra 50 grand this year if you didn't have to give it to the IRS? Well, I mean, you know, you know, think about it. You're in a, a commission only type of position, right? So there's always going to be ebbs and flows. There's going to be market concerns. And I think the biggest challenge that I find is that realtors cannot be away from their money too long, right? I mean, the just the thought of, I don't know what the next 90 days looks like in terms of my income. You can build some certainty around that with just systems and you know, running your business like a business, all these things that we were even talking about at this conference. But at the end of the day, there's some things that are out of your control and just those ideas in the back of your mind, well, what if? Well, that keeps realtors in general from putting money away for long periods of time where they can't touch it. Access, I think, is the number one thing that they just, they can't give up. And, and, Going into that and knowing the issues and being around agents and like myself, for me, it was, you know, the reason I got started in what I'm started in doing and whatnot is because I'm surrounded by other people and I just hear the issues and I, and I hear more and I think I ask a lot of questions that dive into things differently because I hear the issues and it's not, okay, well, let's try to do this and, you know, add more to do this and add more to do that. And it's like, well, let's take a step back. You know, why are these issues happening? Uh, and for me, I think that a lot of the issues, not just in the real estate industry, but in any industry, a lot of the reason why issues continue down this path is because everybody's just allowing them to do so. And so that's, I'm assuming why you've created Wealth Without Wall Street uh, to go ahead and attack the issues head on and say, hey, look, I don't know of anybody else out there that is, you know, putting this in writing of here are the issues, this is what needs to happen in order to fix them. And sometimes you have to think a little bit differently and do things a little bit differently than everybody else because if you're continually trying to just do everything that everybody else is doing, usually the issues don't fix themselves. So, Tell us about Wealth Without Wall Street, how it started, where it's, you know, where it started from and where it's at currently. Yeah. So I think just going along with what you're saying, I mean, the herd mentality is powerful. I mean, I don't think anybody can question that. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, what, you know, phase of life you're in. There's always a herd that's doing something and people want to be a part of it. It's just a natural inclination. But at the same time, the whole idea that if you want different results, you can't expect to do the same thing everybody else is doing and have different results. That's kind of insanity, you know, at the end of the day, continue doing the same thing, but expect it to do something different. Um, and so I think what Wealth Without Wall Street is really born out of is that people are curious that there's got to be a different way because they, they see so many people going down one path and there's just not a lot of results at the end of it. I don't know. I mean, is that something you resonate with? Like definitely you see people they've done, they've spent their whole lives potentially saving, putting money away, working, 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 and they don't seem to be getting ahead. And, and why is that? Do you think? Well, I think that there's a lot of factors. I mean, there's probably more than we could cover in one interview, <laughs> but <laughs> that's usually what I say on every <laughs> single episode. <laughs> but, but I think uh, there's a, there's a mindset that we've all been, kind of given, and I, I blame it on Wall Street, um, I, I don't mean to villainize them, but they're just really good at getting us to do what they want us to do, right? So if I could, if I could sum it up, Wall Street wants you to give, you their, give them your money for as long as you'll let them hold on to it, and then, but make sure that you're taking all the risk. I mean, that's, that's how I would sum it up. And the government has a, an arm in that um, because they're incentivizing us to put money away for long periods of time, saying that it's to our benefit from a tax standpoint. You know, like, oh, you don't have to pay tax on it today. So that's a benefit to you. Well, 
if you really stop and think about it, why? Why is that a benefit to me? Because I expect to be in a lower tax bracket when I'm in my 60s. So that's telling me that I should be planning on making a lot less than I am today. Or that tax brackets are not going to change. And neither of those things are really good, right? One, I don't really plan on making less. That's kind of a, a <laughs> counterintuitive. Yeah, definitely. And then secondly, tax rates are always changing. I mean, think about like even just in the last year or two, there's been all these tax cut changes and stuff. It just depends on who's in the, who's in the White House. And really, it doesn't matter which side it is. There's always going to be changes. We can't control it. So why would we do that? I, I liken it to somebody sitting, you know, we're, we're talking real estate. You're sitting at the closing table and somebody passes you the mortgage note. They say, hey, just, you know, go ahead and sign here. We're going to have this $300,000 mortgage and it's going to be payable over 30 years and blah, blah. And by the way, here's the, the rate. And you look down and it says TBD percent. What are, what are the chances that you're going to sign a document like that? You're not. You're not going to do that, <laughs> right? You're not going to do that. But that's exactly what we do with so many of these things that the government and the Wall Street have put together is that we've said, you know what? Just tell me later how much I owe you. That's ludicrous, right? But that's, that's what they've taught us to do, saying it's to our benefit. So anyway, that's just a couple of examples of what I think is really um, holding us back, standing in our way of really creating wealth is that we're abdicating that to somebody else and we're, we bought it hook, line and sinker. Um, so I don't know, does that help? Yeah, definitely. So for somebody to get out of their comfort zone to say, Hey, look, this is what I'm, you know, being told as far as what I should be doing with their, my money. And, and this is what I'm comfortable with. What's one step that somebody should do in order to say, Hey, at least let me explore what else is out there. Let me look into what my other options are because for the longest yeah. time, I didn't even know there were other options. Yeah, I, don't, I still think there's so few people that know that there's something out there that's different, right? An alternative. What would be some of those but alternatives? They're curious, you know? Yeah. So, so what we would, first of all, I would say is that you have, to, you have to really question that mindset, right? Do I feel like I've been told that I can't manage my own money, right? People think that I have to give it up to somebody else. Like Wall Street is, again, it taught us, I need to give this up to them, because they're smarter than me, or I didn't have the training that they have, or fill in the blank. But reality is, I mean, we've all seen it, right? You, you know this, this guy, you went to college with him maybe, and then all of a sudden, the next month, he's a financial advisor. I mean, realistically, how much more does that guy know than you? He doesn't. No. He's, he's been trained by one of these big firms, and it's been like two weeks, and now he's out there beating the streets trying to sell you. That's not an expert. That's not somebody who has like this incredible way to, to build you wealth overnight. He's just a salesperson who's been trained by a financial institution. So I think, one, you have to question that. Okay, why wouldn't I be able to take back control of my finances and make decisions with my money that are actually wise? So that's a, that's a big first step in my mind. So for somebody that's coming to you and they're saying, hey, look, we listen to this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we know that there's other options. We don't know exactly what those are. Uh, what would you say is just as an overarching theme that you're seeing across your clients is something that a lot of them have done that you're advising to do uh, in a different way? Okay. So, so number one, I think the, the biggest things are like qualified plans. So 401ks, IRAs, SEP IRAs are big in real estate. People are always talking about, oh, I got my SEP IRA because they're trying to save taxes today. Um, but again, what they're doing with that is they're putting money away that they can't touch until they're 59 and a half. Okay. So again, what happens to the market downturns? I have to go and get that money and I have to get penalized and taxed on it then. That's a that's like a triple whammy. And that happened in 2008, 2009, 2010. A lot of my realtor friends had these SEP IRAs ahead of time. And they were forced to go get the money because the market downturned so bad. So they got all this double, triple whammy and they have nothing to show for it now. Right? That is a terrible position to be in. 
And so we want to we want to start saving in places that we can get access to, have liquidity, and but yet it's still going to be growing at a decent rate. Okay, so what's the alternative? <laughs> okay, Joey, that sounds good. Don't do sub IRA. Check a checking account is not going to make you wealthy. True. True. Very true. <laughs> uh, the banks have uh, made sure to pay us the least amount of money for our money. Uh, 0.01% is pretty much going rate right now. Um, <laughs> and so it is depressing, I mean, to, to think about that. So the alternative would be we have to think differently. We have to think outside of our norm. And uh, one of the pillars, we, we talk about the five pillars of Wealth Without Wall Street, and we can get into those a little bit later if you want to. Um, but one of those... Yeah, you can talk about all five. Okay, okay. Well, we start with cash flow. Okay. That's the number one pillar. And yeah, cash flow is, it encompasses things like taxes. Okay, so if you don't have a tax strategy to reduce your taxation, then you're unnecessarily or unexpectedly giving the IRS more than they deserve. I'm not saying that you should not pay taxes. You should pay the amount that you're supposed to, and use the tax code to your benefit. Um, so we have very specific tax type of strategies that will help you reduce that. In many cases, especially for those that are paying 75, 100 or more a year in taxes, we have specific strategies that can reduce that 40 and 50%. Um, so what would you do with an extra 50 grand this year if you didn't have to give it to the IRS? So that's a huge windfall. That's a, that's a way that you can turn the the course of your financial you know, future. So, so tax strategies and debt, how we pay off debt is a huge cash flow. So we've got people that have mortgages. How, what are some specific strategies that we can use to make our mortgage work for us instead of working for it? Um, so we, we talk about the differences in different types of mortgages. We talk about how you pay off debt in terms of, do I give all my money every month? I, I think that's a big challenge for realtors. I mean, we've all had debt at one time or another, or still do. Well, you get in this, this mindset, okay, I had a great month last month. I got an extra 10 grand just sitting in my account, but I've got, you know, 30 grand of this debt over here on this car or, or fill in the blank student loan. Should I put all 10 of it towards that? but what if I need the money back, right? I mean, these, these are the thoughts that mm -hmm. I've had, I'm sure you've had. And so we talk about specific ways we can do both at the same time and allow our money not to get out of our control, but to still consistently be paying down that debt. So again, there's a lot to that, but that all happens under cash flow. So, And that's one of your five pillars? That's right. Yeah, that's the first. You have to start there. Definitely. Because... If you can't identify where you're leaking cash, then you can't really effectively save. So I, th I think that's, if you kind of think of it as a progression, I have to, f I have to you know, put, put stuff in the boat to keep it from leaking, and then I can take that money and I can start saving it more effectively. And that second pillar we use is life insurance, which, what? Life insurance, isn't that when people die? Like, isn't that have to, <laughs> how does that have to do with savings? And so um, we use very specific life insurance contracts that are high, high cash value policies. Um, they, they take your savings from a checking account that's 0.01% to where you're earning 3 to 5%. These are whole life policies, by the way. And, but you have access to the money the entire time. So think about it like I'm moving money from one pocket to the other. If one pocket checking accounts, for instance, have virtually no benefit, except that I can get my hands on the money, right? So you add to that, I get a good rate, rate of return. It's growing tax-free, which we want to we want to reduce taxes at all possible. It's one of the biggest eroders of wealth, right? If I can do that, and then at the same time, be able to leverage that money, which there's a lot more strategies behind that. I'm, I'm sure that I don't want to bore everybody on that. <laughs> but if you can leverage the money, in that policy to then create passive income. That's where we're getting to like the end goal of working with Wealth Without Wall Street is not just to have a policy. That policy is there to capture your cash flow and give you some additional benefits. Um, obviously, there's also a death benefit that comes with it. You know, that kind of is like the cherry on top. Yeah. But 
but we want to be able to leverage that cash to then build passive income today that will help us reduce risk. I mean, as realtors, you are on a hamster wheel every single month, right? I actively have to go and produce that next listing, that next sale, that next buyer, or I have a 30 to 60 to 90 day cycle where I'm not going to have a payday at the end of it. So how do we ever get to a point to where I'm not constantly on the hamster wheel? If you have to start re reducing your active income or replacing, I shouldn't say reducing, replacing your active income with passive income. So that, hey, if I need $10,000 a month to live on and I'm actively producing that 10,000 through my efforts, if I can add $500 a month on this rental property or $500 a month on this private loan that I did, or whatever, then I'm that much closer to where I'm reducing my overall like requirement every single month. And I'm getting closer to financial freedom. And we're going to go into some of the resources that people listening could, you know, reach out to you and, and yeah. get more information. Cause I know that there's somebody listening right now that's saying, Hey, what you're saying sounds great, but it sounds like a different language. Like it, <laughs> Is the radio in English right now or what, are, what is exactly going on? So, well, people aren't seeing your head cocked to the <laughs> left, like, like, a, like a puppy. You're looking at me like, really, Joe? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to definitely make sure that we uh, provide those resources for people. But before we go into resources and how people can contact you, I think that there's a lot of uh, stereotypes yeah. surrounding the real estate industry um, and specifically to the actual realtor themselves what are some of the stereotypes um that you see that are out there that working with agents you know is just drastically opposite of what the you know reality is i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm answering your question so stop me if i'm going the wrong way but i think one of the things that i'm why i'm passionate about helping realtors is that they are naturally so focused on helping others uh, and somebody actually mentioned this at the conference yesterday, is that they are actively trying to solve everybody else's problems, and yet they have a major problem of dealing with their own finances and their own future that they won't slow down to handle. So the stereotype is that they don't work enough. They're out there doing all these crazy things, but reality is, no, the reason they're doing all these things and, and going to conferences and, and doing so much is because they truly want to help you and they're just going, 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 going. They're not the people that are, you know, sleeping in all day and at the bar 24 seven, right. which would be a, you know, a stereotype. The, the reason that I think a lot of people see agents in a bad light is because they don't know exactly what's going on. The agent is not saying, Hey, this is what we're doing and how it helps you. They're just going to the end of the story. And I think that a great story any story has a, a beginning and a middle and an end. And if you only are telling one piece of that story, that's where these stereotypes, you know, kind of come in. And that's where the agent needs to say, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. And it's obviously getting worse, worse, worse. And if I continue to just work, 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 do all these different things, then the, the narrative isn't going to change. I think um, that what you're talking about when it comes to hey, look, we just have to think things differently. What you've been told not necessarily is wrong, but there are other options. Those options may work for you. They may not, but there's options. And right. something could be um, to your benefit, but you have to open up your mind and you need to take a step back. It's phenomenal to put your clients first 24-7. That's great. <laughs> I'm not saying don't put your clients first. Right. But you have to make sure that your finances are, are in line too. I think, you know, I tell agents all the time, you're telling somebody at the listing table that the best investment and, and probably the biggest investment you're going to make is in this purchase, yet most agents uh, don't have their own finances uh, in check. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. In, in fact, I, I would give a, a quick analogy this actually happened the other day. I was at the Masters and meeting a guy for the first time. So I'm just getting to know him. And um, he's in employee benefits. So he's telling me all about, man, you know, I'm, I'm going to this, these companies. And if they, if they won't work with me on like a wellness program for their employees, 
then I just, I just don't, I can't see any way to work with them. You know, I mean, and as he's telling me about all these things, like, you know, helping people with their weight loss, helping them, you know, get their health in check and all this stuff. He's smoking like multiple cigarettes, drinking, and he's severely overweight. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, why would I be taking advice from you? On wellness, right? Like (laughs) you're not the picture of health and wellness right now. And so I think to your point, I mean, if you're a realtor, you're working so hard for your client's biggest investment. And yet we're not taking, you know, care of ourselves. We're not putting ourselves in position to be an advisor to our clients in that biggest wealth transfer. I mean, there's a lot of wealth transfers that happen when sell real estate. So how can we do that? We have to focus on that. And I would say the, the challenge is, is we're really fast to hire a coach for, to build our business, right? Business development, marketing, all these things, running a business within real estate. But when it comes to dealing with our finances, we don't, they just don't typically hire that person to help them, to coach them on ways that they can, improve that themselves. If you have interest in just wanting to learn more, like how does this work? Um, Maybe Joey has completely confused me on what he said. And so I just want to kind of research this myself. We have a video series. It's just four very quick videos. It's like 25 minutes total. It's called um, passiveincome.wealthwithoutwallstreet.com. If you go there, you can put your email in and you'll get all four videos. And like I said, it's short, sweet to the point you're not gonna if you walk out of there and you're like okay this wasn't for me you haven't wasted a lot of time but otherwise it could be really the first step to creating passive income and getting out of the rat race so uh, and i made it specifically for realtors even though we do we do help entrepreneurs and and business owners all across the country that is definitely um specific to realtors so for somebody that's listening they're they, they see the title of this episode revolving around finances and wealth without Wall Street, and they skip to the last 30 seconds rather than listening to the whole thing. What would be one last piece of advice that you would give to an agent when it comes to their wealth? You know, I, I think the biggest thing, I can just keep coming back to this, but make time for it, right? We make time for things that are important to us. And I, I just think don't don't look back and regret because you were so busy. I mean, I, I put, again, I put it in the same boat as like your family. Like I have five little girls and I constantly think there's always something that can get in the way of me spending time with them. Right. There's always, I mean, as a business owner myself, as having been in the mortgage industry, there's always the next pre-approval application. There's always the next buyer I could show. There's always this, that, and the other but you're never going to get that time back when it comes to your family. And those girls rely on me, not just for a paycheck, not just for the food on the table, but for the emotional strength and the um, investment of time that is going to shape their lives for the rest of their lives. That's a, that's a weighty thing to me. And my wife, the same thing, right? My, our marriage is dependent on me making it a priority. It's not going to do it itself. And so I would say the same thing for finances is you have to put it as a priority as you're planning your week. Where are you, where are you investing the time to educate yourself and put yourself in position to have a different result? And so anyway, you can do that very easily by taking in content like this podcast. Um, like our podcast, you're going to consistently learn even just on your drive in um, so make it a priority, start making small changes, adjustments. And, um, and of course I'd love to love to help if I can. Sweet. So one more time, can you reiterate exactly where people can find more information? Yeah. Wealthwithoutwallstreet.com has our podcast, has a lot of resources on there. You can actually download the videos I mentioned before at passiveincome.wealthwithoutwallstreet. Um, you can even set up a free call with us on the website there. There's a, there's a call to action. And um, so, yeah, that's the easiest way to get us. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff too. 
Wolf of Thought Wall Street, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check them out at their website. Also go to PassiveIncome.WealthWithoutWallStreet. Yeah, we made it as long as possible. (laughs) Sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Uh, I know your time is valuable, so I appreciate you uh, coming over here and sitting next to the water with me. Oh, it's beautiful. (laughs) Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.